We're going to talk next about a, uh, a shooting board. <laughs> I've got a few here. Well, this is a this is a, this is a shooting board. It's it's a most basic one that I've uh, one of my earlier ones, and uh, I did an article for Fun Woodworking a number of years ago, and they came up and we created a bunch of bench accessories there. Uh, several more bench accessories to be able to work on the workbench book holding specifically. One of the uh, accessories in the article was a shooting board. So we actually created two shooting boards while they were here filming and photographing. So this is an attachment for 45 degree angle, but if you're not, uh, so this is an attachment and it bolts into here. So it's something I designed several years ago and I have another one for case miters. That I, uh, I'll show you in a bit on a different shooting board. So let's assume let's assume we have a piece of wood. The shooting board, what it does is it, it uh, creates a, a 90, 90 degree edge if you're using uh, just a straight fence. 90 degree edge with uh, in conjunction with a long sole plane. Now this particular shooting board is an earlier one, so what I would use is. Uh, this was the kind of point I would use back then. And it's designed for it's a right hand orientation. So if I'm you notice that that sound is actually it's individual shavings coming off. Individual shavings coming off. And this creates a perfect 90 degree smooth surface. Now, because it's a uh, right-hand orientation, I have problems with it. I tend not to use it as much as uh, it's one of the probably one of the uh, shooting boards I developed for uh, the fine woodworking articles. I had to create both a left-hand and, and a right-hand one, and this is uh, this works really well. A shooting board along with uh, a long-soled, uh, in this case, four plane because it's uh, as long as the uh, the side and the bottom of the plane are 90 degrees to each other. So it works really well if you're starting out and you're making your first shooting board. And I, again, I offer plans for that at woodskills.com. So you can use either that or use a, uh, a bevel up jack. It's a little shorter than this guy. Also, this works equally well. The noise. To talk about how these work, people always ask, uh, aren't you actually shaving? part of the fence away every time. Not not so because uh, because of this little gap at the bottom, it keeps the uh, the sole from from the edge just just enough to avoid hitting the fence. So so I talk about that in my course and I explain how that works. So that's the premise. This little gap at the bottom is a little protrudes just enough to keep the, the sole of the plane away from the, uh, the fence. So I'll put this away. And I'll show you. So the, the shooting board itself is uh, working with hand tools. Really, really neat to make one of these, build one of these. They're very straightforward to make. I offer plans. It uh, comes with it. You can create it with attachments, and that's the difference with, uh, with mine. Though this would be a 45. So this works uh, bolting this down. So if I'm doing a 45, again, I would grab uh, So this cleans the, uh, I need to readjust the, the depth of the uh, blade, it's a little cheap. It's a little too thick. Where's that adjustment? Yeah, it's 45 degree adjustment. It's 45 degrees, so, so I'll put that aside. Again, if you're building a basic one, you can use one of your existing long sole planes to uh, use the shooting board. Now, the, uh, the more recent shooting board I'm using, and I'll show you that. This is my uh, my most recent go-to shooting board, and I'll tell you what I've done with this. This is actually the uh, one of the original shooting boards with left-hand orientation that I created for that fine woodworking article. 
way back when, and this uh, this attachment uh, does case miters. So do I have one here? Yeah, this is uh, an example of a case miter. This is uh, 45 degrees. So this would be uh, a small compartment, a box, a drawer, and so it's important to have the, uh, the corners of 45 degrees, and that's accomplished through the uh, through this uh, this attachment. So if I'm not using the attachment. I can uh, switch it up with so if I push this away, this would be uh, the other attachment. Again, this does uh, this does case miters and this has face miters. So a face miter, uh, an idea, uh, this is a this is a face miter. So the uh, the idea is the same. Now the difference between this shooting board and the one I showed you earlier, this is a uh, <laughs> it's a dedicated shooting plane. You can purchase this from uh, Vertas or Lee Nielsen. Still, I think they still market it, and it uh, rides uh, the original version of this shooting board was uh, it didn't have a tra had the track but not this not this portion of the track to lock the uh, the shooting plane in you can see how it's set up how beautifully it glides so this what this does this system what it does is it removes that variable of having to keep the shooting uh, plane against the fence so that relieves that issue and then it's just a matter of holding the component against uh, the fence and then uh, gliding this back and forth it works. It's beautiful. It's a really a, a real step above the uh, the other one. But the other one, I I used the conventional one that I shown earlier for for many many years. Actually, I was trying to avoid purchasing one of these, and an opportunity to get one came up. So why not? And this again, it's a uh, case miter, and it's set for forty five. So so I, this is critical to check this to make sure. 45 so so that's that attachment and you'll notice that this uh this shooting board is in left-hand orientation i'm left-handed so it's the one i use for the most part and i've got three others that maybe another left-handed one i'm not sure so, so i'm not doing uh face or case miters i'm doing 90 degree corn edges and that's The beauty of this, so that's a perfect uh, uh, 90 degree. If you're measuring uh, for square or uh, or an angle, specific angle, a little technique or a little tip is is to not have the uh, the gauge against the wood because it's very easy not to see the uh, the gaps. So keep it away just enough, and then. Try to determine if the gap is uniform from one end to the other, like I'm showing now. So I just like I'll exaggerate that. That's what I'm talking about. That gap, but bring it down to where you can actually see the gap. Because if you have it too close, it sort of masks the ridges and the valleys. So that's a uh, that's a shooting board wax block to uh, keep your planes lubricated and uh, keep them from uh, keep the rust away too. So I tend to wipe this on the, on the bottoms of my, uh, or on the, not the bottoms, but the, uh, in this case it is the bottom. It looks like the side, but it's the bottom. They glide better, so I tend to use that. I really, really take care of my tools because I, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I like to only purchase tools once, so that's it.